special video where I'm going to recap uh, the blitz and rapid action that's taken place over the last couple of weeks and then give you a preview of what's uh, on in the next few months. So let's jump straight into it. Uh, the main events, of course, uh, were the start of the 2016 Grand Chess Tour. And there you see the overall standings after the first two legs, which took place in Paris and Leuven. So uh, the tour uh, leaders at the moment are jointly Hikaru Nakamura and Wesley So, the two Americans. Both of them have earned 17 uh, tour points and both of them have also earned uh, 45 thousand dollars in prize money already. They are followed by Aronian, Vashilagraf, Karana, Giri, Anand, Kramnik, Topalov. And then uh, for those of you who wonder why Magnus Carlsen, despite having won the most prize money uh, of all, as well as the most points, uh, which aren't shown here, as well as Laurent Fresinet, that's because uh, both of them uh, were wild cards. Uh, they are not going to play in the two remaining events, which are St. Louis and the London Chess Classic. So that's why they are not uh, in those standings. It's also important uh, to mention that for the final overall uh, Grand Chess Tour standings, only the three best events out of four will be taken into account for each player. Apart from Anand, of course, who missed uh, the first tournament in Paris. So for him, it will be Leuven, St. Louis uh, and London, which will be taken into account. But for all the other players, uh, their worst uh, tournament result will be uh, dismissed for the final overall standings. So let's come back uh, to the tournaments, not so much to the results, but more uh, maybe the highlights of the tournament. So first of all, uh, I have to say I was a uh, very very happy to see such prestigious tournament uh, return to cities like Paris or Brussels or just of Brussels as is the case for Leuven and also the venues were incredible. I was lucky enough to be on site um, for the Paris leg uh, doing running the official Twitter account. The venue was ma magnificent. It was in central Paris. It couldn't have been any better and it's great to see chess take a whole new dimension again. Then the Leuven leg was played in the beautiful town hall. I'm sure you've all seen the footage so uh, great news for chess. As for the broadcast, uh, it was also very impressive uh, for both tournaments, maybe especially so in Paris, thanks to the involvement of Daily Motion and Daily Motion Games. There were uh, a total of 23 cameras filming uh, the action at all times, and none less than four shows uh, were won on the tournament. Of course, the one on site in French, uh, which was anchored by a famous sport journalist, Astrid Bach. Then we had two shows here from the Hamburg studios, the English one with Peter Swidler and Jan Gustafsson and the Spanish one with Anna Rudolf and Daniel Forsen. And then there was of course also the English American show which was run uh, from St. Louis and from on site uh, with Maurice Ashley and Alejandro Ramirez who were in Paris and Leuven. And then I have to highlight the dedication of the St. Louis crew, uh, Jennifer Shahadi, Yasser, Sai Ravan, Eric Hansen and Tatef Abrahimian, who was running the Twitter account because, uh, because of the time difference, they had to get up every day uh, at around 4 a.m. for eight days, so respect. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, more good news is at the closing ceremonies in both Paris and Leuven, uh, the organizers announced that there would be a 27, uh, 2017 edition of the tournament. So I think that's uh, great news for all the chess fans in the world. I will now take you to the Chess24 website. Uh, first of all, to encourage you to read uh, Colin's excellent daily reports. You can see them there. And then I was going to talk about some things that could possibly be improved or that were discussed uh, regarding the Grand Chess Tour. So to do that, I think the point that was most discussed and which was highlighted in the Leuven Day 2 uh, report, if you scroll down, uh, something which I also experienced, I have to say, when I was running the Twitter in Paris, on day one, uh, five rapid games a day is a lot. Uh, I think you could clearly see the players were drained and I'm not going to read out the quotes to you. You can do this for yourself uh, in the day two report of Leuven, but basically Carlsen, Aronian 
and MVL all agreed that um, five games of rapid chess a day is very exhausting and it's probably also a lot tougher than just one classical day, um, game. So for example, Maxime uh, suggested that the time control could be made faster or there could be three days of play in rapid. So that's surely something um, the organizers might consider for next year. And then another uh, topic which was up to debate was um, the fact uh, rapid and blitz games were being mixed with classical games because of course uh, the St. Louis Sinkfield Cup and the London Chess Classic uh, will be played at classical time controls. So how do the people feel um, about mixing those time controls for the overall standing? So I would also be very curious to hear your opinion on the subject and you can let me know in the comment section below this video. Then the next section of this video, I was going to uh, call it the random bit or random highlights, but then as I uh, got on, I realized that all of them were about Magnus, so it's probably um, better to call it Magnus mania or something. So the first fact uh, about Magnus is something he won't be very happy about. And this is the fact that he's dropped to number two uh, in the live blitz rating uh, list behind Ch Chinese Grandmaster Ding Li Ren. So I'm very sure Magnus will be eager to uh, correct this and t be on top again of all classic, of all standings, all time controls as soon as he gets the chance to play another blitz event. Then the second fact, the second fact I have to say uh, took a bit of a hit when I saw the new uh, standings, which I showed you a minute ago, because when I first looked up the overall standings, Magnus uh, was not dismissed, he was in pole position. And that had, of course, fueled rumors about the fact that Magnus uh, might also be the wild card for the final event of the Grand Chess Tour in London. But seeing as he was now uh, discarded from the standings, I think this rumor has taken a bit of a hit and it's probably unlikely uh, we are going to see Magnus play in London. A third fact about Magnus is uh, something, a quote I've taken from an interview from uh, Morris Ashley with none other than 13 world champion uh, Gary Kasparov. And here's what Kasparov had to say, amongst others, about Magnus Carlsen. He said, when Magnus plays chess, it looks easy. He has this passion, this hunger to get even better with every game, with every move. I thought it was a very interesting uh, interview and I very much uh, liked what Kasparov said about uh, Carlsen. I thought it was really interesting. So I encourage you all to have a look uh, at this interview. And then finally, last Magnus fact is a little video, which I guess all of you will have seen by now, but in case you haven't, uh, here we go. We got Payet, <laughs> Dimitri Payet. I just don't think you understand. He's super Slavins, man. He's better than Zidane. Woo! We got Dimitri Payet. <laughs> this is a little video uh, which was posted the day after uh, the opening game of the Euro 2016 which Magnus attended while he was in Paris. It was a game in which uh, Paris, um, Paris, in which France defeated Romania 1-0 thanks to a late goal by Dimitri Payet, uh, who Magnus is singing about in this video. Uh, I talked about it with Magnus and he said it was complete coincidence he bumped into the Norwegian uh, TV crew which filmed this and which asked him for his opinion on the game. So all of this was very uh, spontaneous. Also, uh, for those of you wondering, uh, Magnus was actually uh, totally sober when this was filmed. So there you go, just in a very good mood. Which brings me uh, to Twitter. This is not what I wanted to show. So there we go, let's start. Um, I had a look at what the players treated during the event. Uh, only half of the field, only five players were active uh, on Twitter. Let's start with world champion Magnus Carlsen. The first, po uh, first tweet was posted on June the 12th, um, on the last day of the Paris leg of the Grand Chess Tour, when Magnus treated a good old fashioned meltdown today but happy to at least get second place. On to the next one. 
We all know, of course, how the next one went. Um, Magnus went on to uh, completely dominate the Leuven Grand Chess Tour. He also find, uh, found time for a train in between um, the two legs, between Paris and Leuven. He posted on June 15 this calls for a song. Uh, this is, of course, this was a reference to the video I've just showed you because on June 15, uh, France played the second game of their group uh, in which once again Dimitri Payet scored a very uh, late uh, goal for France. So there you go. And then the last tweet, uh, interestingly, Magnus didn't tweet again after winning uh, the Leuvenleck. But on June 18th in the morning, Magnus posted a new day, new opportunities. And what a day it would be, uh, because that was the second day of the Rapid Games where Magnus uh, went on to score four out of four. So um, great treat in hindsight. Let's move on to a player who wasn't so active on Twitter, and that's uh, Fabiano Caruana. Uh, the only tweet he posted was uh, this photo of him in the beautiful uh, venue in Leuven saying he got to the games a few days early. There we see a happy Caruana in the venue. Then the player who, as per usual, was the most active on Twitter, Anish Giri. Anish Giri, there were also some tweets uh, from Paris, but I preferred uh, to show you the ones from Leuven, which I found quite funny. So on June uh, 18th, uh, Anish posted one good game a day, keeps the doctor away. It hadn't been a great day for him, but he had, uh, if memory serves, played one nice game to take out MVL. But then on June 19th, uh, the first day of the Blitz, things didn't go so well. And Anish posted this link to Eminem's uh, and Dr. Dre's song, and I need a doctor. And then finally, after the event was over on June 21st, Anish posted, feel I could have done better, but nonetheless had fun in uh, Paris and Leuven. Kudos to organizers and congrats uh, to the winners, which I think echoed the sentiment of a lot of the players. I think um, most players were very happy with the organization. Uh, apart from maybe the schedule, I didn't hear any complaints and everyone seemed pretty happy and to be enjoying themselves. Then let's hear it from uh, one of the local players from the Paris leg at least. He mostly posted during the first leg. So his first tweet was on day one, uh, the first day of the first leg. Uh, translated from French, this says uh, fantastic conditions for the Paris Grand Chess Tour. We are really enjoying ourselves for the moment. And we're also taking a rest because the program of the day was rather long. So there we go again. Um, uh, what I said earlier, maybe the organizers will have to reconsider the schedule for next year. And then on June 10th, the second day, um, Maxime did have a bit of a nightmare with the white pieces. He didn't play badly, but it just went a lot better when he had black. So there we see him not losing his humor, uh, just like Anish, saying, give me nine blacks in Brussels, please, which unfortunately wasn't possible, of course. And then a final tweet from the Paris Grand Chess Tour winner Hikaru Nakamura, uh, tweeting on the last day on the Sunday, as the Lord of Light would probably say, it was meant to be, hashtag Game of Thrones, hashtag another Sunday. I'm afraid I've never seen a single episode of Game of Thrones, so I leave it to Jan uh, during one of his shows to decipher and explain this to you if any of you are interested. And then uh, the Grand Chess Tour wasn't the only uh, high top level uh, Blitz event that was on the last couple of weeks. There was also the Eurasian Blitz Cup of the President of Kazakhstan, um, which was one which has a surprise winner, uh, Farouk Amonatov. Um, I don't think many people would have expected him uh, to take this tournament, just to give you an idea of how strong uh, the tournament was world uh, blitz champion uh, Alexander Grish only finished in 20th place so a very very strong field and it was said that it took place at the same time as Lovren and was somewhat overshadowed by the Grand Chester but again hopefully next year uh, there will be no scheduled clashes and both tournaments can get the attention um, they deserve 
it looked like from from afar the organization uh, was very impressive in Almaty in Kazakhstan. Uh, the tournament took place at the Ritz Carlton Hotel, and beautiful pictures were provided by David Lada. Again, I can only refer you to uh, the website in the latest news. The latest article is a roundup of the tournament by Colin, so have a look at that. You can play through all the games. Uh, there were a lot of them, a lot of action. So there you go. So that's it for the past events. Now uh, let's have a quick look at what's next. The next few weeks are going to be rather quiet when it comes to top top um, events. But then in July, the season kicks off and there are going to be a lot uh, of very interesting and very strong tournaments. So it all starts on July 17th um, with the Danju tournament in China, where uh, China, uh, six of China's best players are in action and they are joined by Ivanchuk. Always very exciting, of course, to see Ivanchuk play in any tournament. Nepom Yashi, Leko and Hari Krishna. And then from uh, July 10 to 17, the traditional Dortmund tournament with amongst others, uh, Kramnik, Caruana and MVL. So again, a very strong field. Then the strongest tournament of the month of July uh, is uh, arguably Bilbao. Bilbao, everyone will be um, following especially two games in the tournament. And those will be the two games between world champion and his challenger, uh, Magnus Carlsen and Karyakin. It will be the first time they clash uh, since Karyakin won the um, candidates tournament in Moscow. So that will be very interesting. Then the four other participants in Bilbao are Nakamura, Giri, So and Wei Yi. Then a week later, the traditional Poikowski tournament starts in Siberia, uh, shortly followed by uh, the tournament in Biel. And then finally, on July 25th, uh, the British Championship starts. Uh, we are the official broadcast partner uh, for the British Championship, so we will be bringing you a daily uh, live show. And I am very, very much looking forward to that. If you want to look up uh, what I just said, again, you can head to our website. Um, there is an article called 2016 Chess Calendar, where you can look up everything I just said uh, with the dates, with the players, with the official uh, websites. So that's a very good link to keep in mind and keep going back to. You can also, um, of course, I mentioned this earlier, in early August, there's the Sinkerfield Cup, the third leg of the Grand Chess Tour, which will conclude in December uh, in London at the London Chess Classic. And then in the calendar, you can also uh, see past events. If you scroll down, here it is, completed events. You can see everything that's been happening already. OK, and for the final part uh, of this video, what's next for me? I'm going to uh, Corsica. On Monday morning, uh, there is a tournament taking place in Corsica. I won't be playing in it, but I will be spectating. I will be uh, on site daily uh, cheering on my dad who is playing in the tournament. And I will also uh, be ri writing a report uh, for Chess24. And I also uh, want to conduct some uh, player interviews. The field is actually uh, pretty strong. You might not have heard of it. But uh, of the tournament, but there are 10 players over 2,600. You see the starting lineup there. So if there is anyone you would like me to interview or if there is any questions you would like to ask some of these players, uh, let me know again in the comments below this video and I'd be very happy to do that. So that's all uh, from me from now. I'm going to get ready, pack my bags, and then I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.